So good uh, morning, afternoon, evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Jeff Rowe, I'm the acting chair of the CentOS Automotive SIG. We are here to discuss the what, why, and the how. I think if you're probably on this call, you have probably already seen some of these uh, some of these slides and stuff. So I will try to um, spend as little time on the boring stuff as possible and hopefully get on to the more exciting things about how the SIG works to produce auto SD. Um, just as far as a brief agenda, I thought I'd go over the automotive SIG's missions and goals and uh, introduce the automotive stream distribution, which is new from the last time we had a dojo conversation. Uh, there are some guidelines about how we work with other groups, other open source projects, and uh, what, what our community standards are for working within this SIG, as well as, of course, uh, some, a more technical discussion on how the SIG works to produce auto SD. So uh, as far as an introduction goes, uh, why do we have an automotive SIG in CentOS? What is the goal? Primarily, the goal is for, from Red Hat's perspective, the goal is to use this SIG as a public place for discussion and, uh, and participation from the public on how a Red Hat develops its automotive in-vehicle operating system. Um, this is not a publicly available product yet, so we're basically in the research and development phase. And uh, it's a very exciting thing to be going on. There is a whole lot going on in automotive. Certainly the automotive industry is going, undergoing a transformation, um, not really abandoning, but improving on the existing state of the art that is very focused on customization and embedded devices and, uh, and uh, single use machines. Uh, within a car that have been proliferating in recent years to the point of view, to the point where there are dozens of individual computing devices and compute units inside a car. Uh, there is a general trend in the industry to consolidate these and to provide more resources so that the resources can be shared among various workloads and to uh, improve the state of the art with regard to functional safety. And uh, we believe that Red Hat believes that Linux is the a, an ideal. It's an ideal usage for Linux. Um, so that's why we have created this SIG within CentOS to uh, create a, a point where we can have discussions about this and create artifacts like the automotive stream distribution that we call AutoSD, uh, which we'll talk about next. Uh, the automotive stream distribution is a binary distribution that's developed within this SIG. Uh, the, it serves as a public in-development preview of the upcoming Red Hat in-vehicle operating system in the same way that CentOS Stream provides a view of the next version of RHEL, of uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux. So uh, we're very excited about this. Uh, AutoSD is a, a place, well, the SIG is a place where the community, uh, as well as potential customers, partners, uh, and, and other related projects can come and see what will land in the product eventually and also to potentially have some some uh, feedback on that and some actionable uh, actionable efforts to go into it uh, we welcome participation from anybody with this sig uh, it'll also function as a test bed for new technologies and methods including containers in automotive which we will get to in a few minutes i can hear it sounds like perhaps pierre is on hi pierre hey Jeffrey. sorry for being late introduce no worries. I want to introduce uh, Pierre Yves Chibon. He is the technical lead for Auto SD and for the SIG. And uh, we will hear from him considerably in just a few minutes. This is sort of a diagram that uh, Pierre actually created uh, that shows how CentOS feeds into RHEL and then how CentOS, the CentOS Automotive SIG feeds into the Red Hat in vehicle operating system through the automotive stream distribution. So what we're going to be mostly talking about today is this bottom part, the automotive stream distribution, which is uh, the latest big thing that's going on. Uh, there are other communities that influence AutoSD and the CentOS SIG. Uh, these are communities that Red Hat is, uh, you can see in red, there's a little note that says founding member. Those are the relation, those, that reflects the relationship that Red Hat as a company has with these external communities. Um, we've been very excited to participate in these and to help lead some of them. 
Uh, the Eclipse SDV, Software Defined Vehicle Edge Working Group, has is just now forming. Uh, there will be a, a contribution day effort toward the end of the month where we will see a number of software projects entering this working group, becoming underneath its purview. It's all part of the uh, Eclipse automotive effort that has been ongoing for about the past two years. Uh, we are excited to be founding members also of the ARMS, ARMS SOFI Special Interest Group. SOFI is an industry consortium around developing a scalable open architecture for uh, cloud native in vehicle computing, in vehicle computing which uh, sounds a little bit vague, but it's actually very specific about creating hardware that is appropriate for auto, the automotive world, uh, the next generation of the automotive world, to be precise. Uh, this CentOS SIG is what we're here to talk about today. Uh, Red Hat is obviously a founding member. Uh, we are members of Automotive Grade Linux, which is a, a project within the Linux Foundation that also creates a uh, it is not a distro, it is the components of a distro that can be used to create customized uh, and automotive software. Um, some of the most exciting stuff that we are that Red Hat is in, is doing out in the community has to do with functional safety certification. Uh, Red Hat is a leading member of the ELISA project. Uh, I'm an ELISA uh, ambassador. I'm very happy to be very deeply involved with this project to bring functional safety to the Linux world and also to bring the Linux world into the functional safety world. Um, alongside that effort, we also are helping to spearhead uh, an effort within the ISO community to bring ISO 26262 up to par with Linux so that Linux will be able to, to qualify underneath this, uh, this ISO. Um, we'll go into too many de details about that. There's been a lot written about it. Uh, essentially, the ISO pass process is uh, a, it's a years long effort to create a, an addendum to ISO 26262 to accommodate uh, Linux as pre existing complex software, because that apparently is a big challenge for ISO 26262 certification. So uh, we're happy to report that the ISO pass is in draft mode right now. It's being worked on and being evaluated by the ISO community. And we're hoping that uh, next year it will be uh, an officially approved part of ISO 26262. Um, last but not least, we uh, Red Hat has been involved with Lenaro since essentially the beginning of Lenaro. Uh, Lenaro, as everybody knows probably, is a, a software organization. It's a consortium among ARM licensees to create, uh, to, to essentially make Linux a full-fledged uh, participant in the Linux ecosystem. Uh, Red Hat started the Linaro Data Center Group and has also helped form uh, Linaro Edge or Ledge. And there's now an automotive tiger team ongoing to, un to work out what Linaro will be doing in, in the context of automotive. And we're happy to be part of that. So uh, AutoSD, We've, we believe that AutoSD is great for experiments. Uh, there are containers within AutoSD. You can, I've got the links here that you can actually see just by going to sigs.centos.org slash automotive. All of the documentation is there and uh, you'll be able to see it in just a few minutes. Uh, there's OS tree work. There uh, was work on unattended updates that's been documented and there's a ton more that uh, Pierre can go over in just a few minutes. This is the way that the SIG operates in terms of its relationship with the Red Hat in vehicle operating system. Uh, the, the work that we do here in the, in the SIG uh, to produce AutoSD, we are, it, it is conversant with CentOS Stream. We take artifacts from CentOS Stream. We also provide updates and, and, and uh, uh, pull requests back into CentOS Stream. And then uh, both of these feed into Red Hat Enterprise Linux. And the Red Hat in-vehicle operating system derives directly from RHEL and uh, also takes some, uh, some components, particularly the kernel, from AutoSD. And Pierre will hopefully stop me if I say anything that's completely, completely wrong. But I'm, I believe this is, this is correct. So far, so good. Good, thank you. <laughs> Appreciate that. 
Uh, as far as the SIG goes as a community, uh, we've got a wiki page, like all of the CentOS SIGs do. We've got an extensive set of documentation that is growing by leaps and bounds all the time. There is a mailing list that you can join. Uh, there's certainly a chat group uh, through um, through Matrix. You can uh, you can get to it with Element. I believe we'll have a place to post these slides. Uh, we'll definitely post a link to them from this wiki page. So if you miss any of these links, don't worry. There will always be ways to, to find them. And then meetings, of course. We got uh, we have an extensive uh, backlog of all of the meeting recordings. It's available on YouTube, and all of the links are here on the meetings page. If you just go to the CentOS wiki and drill down to the automotive SIG, you'll find a link to our meetings page that has all of the previous meetings. There are monthly formal meetings for the SIG in which we have an agenda and slides and a recording. And then about uh, offset from that, about, every two, about once a month, but two weeks separate, we uh, usually hold an office hours. I have a feeling that office hours will probably diminish over the summer as people go on vacation, but uh, we'll definitely continue the cadence and keep it up uh, as long as there's an interest in doing so. The community prov ab abides by the CentOS code of conduct. Uh, we haven't we haven't created any additional requirements at all. We believe the CentOS code of conduct is very fair and solid, and uh, we definitely agree with with its content and we appreciate Sean for maintaining it. Um, and then all all of the policies that we do are determined by the community within these meetings. So if you have any concerns, questions, interests, uh, please come to the meetings and we'd be happy to discuss anything you want to. I'm gonna take a quick pause just to check to see if there's any questions or answers. I don't see any questions just yet. So keep on going. Uh, producing AutoSD. These are the, the links to the code base. Uh, there are some images. Um, and actually, I've got some screenshots that show various things. This is the, a link to the code base on GitLab. I'm going to turn it over, Pierre, I'm going to turn it over to you in just a moment. I just wanted to kind of go over so people, on, if, if somebody's new to the uh, the SIG, they'll they'll know what they'll they know they'll know what they're in the right place if they run across this. Uh, this is the code base within GitLab. This is the list of images. You can see that there are a lot of of images that are um, these are dates, so you can see that they're developed on a daily basis. The documentation is really the first place I would send to anybody who wanted to learn more about the SIG and about AutoSD. There's a whole lot of stuff going on there. Uh, and you can see uh, here's the documentation on customizing, on, on containers, on using OS tree images and unattended updates and, and et cetera. Anything you'd want to know is, is here. And if it isn't, we'd be glad to talk with you and see if you wanted to make a contribution. And then, of course, the CI CD infrastructure, which is uh, that is something I'm going to leave to Pierre to talk about. <laughs> so. Um, in fact, I can probably just hand it over just there. I'm not sure what's next. Next is just open discussion. So, Pierre, feel free to jump back to any of the slides. Um, I think you covered it pretty much. The, so, um, just to, to touch on the CI/CD front, uh, every match request for uh, for every match request made to the sample image uh, project, we have um, we're building all the images. So, we make sure that the images, uh, you know, if you if you change something to the way the image are built, we make sure that the image are still are. Uh, can build. We also have nightly builds, uh, and that's in the outcome of this is stored in autosd.seek.sentos.org. And among these nightly builds, so you'll have the nightly version of uh, the automotive stream repository, uh, but you'll also have uh, nightly images that are built. And I have literally, as Jeffrey was, was uh, speaking, sent uh, the update to the automotive SIG mailing list, announcing the fact that we now have nightly images built for QMU, for Raspberry Pi. Uh, we have a number of different images. So if you go on the uh, sig.santos.org slash automotive, which is where our documentation is, and if you click on downloading images, uh, the link that we can see on the on the left of uh, Jeffrey's screen there, um, you'll, have a you'll have a link to where you can find the images, but also the description about what are the different types of images. Um, 
so I'll I'll step back a little bit from what Jeffra said uh, to give a, an idea. But we the SIG is currently producing about we are currently producing three types of artifacts. Uh, the main one is the automotive stream distribution. That's the one that most people are interacting with, and it's the one that is in the production workflow or in the in the work, development workflow of the product that Red Hat is working on, the Red Hat in vehicle operating system. Um, but we have two other artifacts that, on that. One of them I just touched upon. Those are images, and those are they are not images that are meant to be taken as is and be used, you know, in your car or by an you know, automotive manufacturer. But they are meant to be examples on how you can build images using AutoSD, using third-party repositories, embedding container uh, images in the image itself. So you suddenly have an OS3 based operating systems that contains pre-populated container images in the container, yeah, container images in the image that you're building, which means suddenly you can update your containers by rolling out a new OS3 update. So there's pretty uh, there are some pretty interesting uh, aspects to that. Um, it's uh, we also have uh, so containers. We also have this, uh, um, the documentation. I don't I don't think that we have an actual sample image for that, but we have documentation on how you can lux encrypt the the images so that you have uh, encryptions when the the image is off when the system is off. Uh, we have. Uh, Alex Larson has been working, and he has a blog post about it. Uh, so if you Google Alex L, Alex Larson, his blog is on the gnome.org domain, if I remember correctly. He's been looking at ways to secure the, the systems, um, you know, so that the image, so that someone cannot uh, what's the word? compromise the system when it's offline. So you have Lux subscription, but you also have other means that you can achieve that. Um, it's the end of the day. It's you know, the week for me, so of course my English is failing me. Uh, I'm trying to remember what are the the kind of features that are being used for this. Um, uh, FS very FS very T and um, FS very T and DM very T. I believe are the two uh, kernel. Uh, can a feature that can be used to ensure either block device uh, integrity of uh, running systems or file uh, file level integrity of a running system so that you ensure that uh, the, the block device is interesting but you basically you can make sure that you you don't mess with the sim but, but you can't make sure that the file is not added or file is not removed while the the file the fs ready um, I believe it's, uh, it's a correct one. Uh, it does it at the file level so that you're sure that the, the content of the file uh, doesn't change, but also no extra file is added or removed. So these are all interesting investigations that are being done by a member of the SIGs. And that specific part is not uh, present in the documentation yet because this is still work in progress and there is nothing to show, but it gives you an idea of uh, what we are working on. Um, Alex wrote an extensive documentation on OS3. So if you actually never used OS3 before, um, the documentation we have in the automotive SIG here uh, will give you a pretty good idea of what auto, auto what OS3 is and uh, how you can use it. So it's a, it's pretty an, uh, an interesting way to have. Um, if you go to building images at the bottom, you'll find a, a few more links that are not part of the of the main structure here, but then it's otherwise become too long. Uh, but you'll have things like the Lux subscription will be at the bottom of the building images. How to customize your image? Will be also uh, from this page, so you can you can take one of our image and you know I'm taking this and I'm just adding this part on the top of it. I'm taking this and I'm just adding this extra repository and I want this extra package from that extra repository. So this kind of customization is also documented there. Um, so I spoke about three artifacts and I've covered two so far. AutoSD is one. The sample images are another one. The third one is simply the automotive SIG RPM repository. Because AutoSD is by definition an RPM repository, but it's an RPM repository that contains the, in, which is the public in development version of the product. So it's everything that lands in AutoSD are things that Red Hat is interesting to bring in its product and on the live. Uh, but we are a community, we're a community project, and not everything that we work on will end up in the product. Uh, so 
we also have an automotive SIG repository in which we can do experiments. We could have a, we currently do not, but we could have a separate kernel with extra configurations in the automotive SIG repository versus what is currently in AutoSD. Uh, we have, for example, um, we've split it to the Linux firmware package, uh, which contains 200 megs of binary block from for different firmware for servers and laptops, which have which are pretty limited interest when you're in a car. You don't need to have, you know, firmware uh, regarding servers when you're booting a, an operating system in the car. So we've created a, a Linux firmware automotive package uh, that currently basically contains only the Raspberry Pi 4 uh, firmware. Uh, so we go from, if I remember correctly, we go from 20, from 200 meg to two meg or 20 meg, I forgot, but the, the saving is pretty impressive still. And uh, and that's something which is currently only in the automotive SIG repository. Uh, it's something that our sample images on the Raspberry Pi for the Raspberry Pi is using, mm -hmm. uh, but we don't know yet if that's something that uh, that will end up in AutoSD. That's uh, that's a decision that Red Hat will have to to make. Mm -hmm. But at the moment, it's uh, it hasn't made uh, it hasn't been made yet. Um, that's I think the, the so those are the three main artifacts. Those are what we are working on, J4 has been putting the links in the chat here for if, you, uh, if you're curious. Um, I'm happy to take any questions. So J4, do you see anything that I've been missing? No, I think you've covered it all quite well. Um, and for the, if you go back to the, maybe the GitLab page to explain a little bit the structure, give an idea of what is what. So the groups are basically, we do, uh, since we are, uh, CentOS 6, everything is done via the CentOS account system. Every access is uh, managed via the CentOS account system. And the way you do that is by mapping groups between the groups in accounts.centos.org and groups in GitLab. And the way GitLab's work is that you you get ac you give get access to a level and everything, and you will have this, that access to everything underneath it. So for example, if I was to give G4 access to the RPM namespace, he would have that access to every RPM underneath it. And that can, that can end up being quite tricky. So the way we solve that, if we've created a group namespace and we create, and all the groups end up being created there, and then we can add, use these groups to give access to folks to the different project in other namespaces. And then we break the hierarchy, which means we, we have a more fine-tuned uh, permission model there. Um, the sample images repository, which is the first one from the top here, contains what it says. It's the OS build definitions, uh, OS build manifest to build uh, the sample images. Uh, it, we, we have more sample images than we publish on uh, autosd.sig.center.org, uh, but we, with the ones we publish, we build and publish on a daily basis are the ones which we believe are the most interesting. Uh, the SIGS doc is the, the the sources of the documentation that's available at six.centro.org slash automotive. And then the, the other two namespace that we have are the RPMs and the source namespace. And also the source namespace is meant to host sources of projects. So the equivalent of a fork of an upstream project that we would sync regularly and then potentially have patch on the top of this. And that allows us to use the source Git workflow if we want to. And the RPM namespace is just our regular disk git namespace. Uh, we've worked with the CentOS infrastructure to allow for uh, SIGs to have their space in GitLab uh, and it like this. We have worked with the CentOS infrastructure to come up with the best practices, which includes all the access needs to go via accounts.centos.org. You, you're, not, you're not allowed to give someone direct access uh, to the project without going through the, uh, through the groups. Uh, but also like what's the how to make how to make this work with uh, CBS with the CentOS build system. So now the CentOS build system allows people to build from GitLab. So we are we've been able to use the the RPMs and uh, space there to to host our disk kit, the Git repository of, of the disk kit, uh, of the disk kit. And we've worked with them as well on the Lucas High Cache, and all of this makes it uh, you know the Git branching structure that was mandatory to use on git.sensor.org no longer applies here. The Lucas I cache structure is also the same one as uh, you can choose. You can either keep to the current one or you can you can choose to use uh, the the one that is already used by Center Streams and Fedora. 
and this makes it very easy for anyone to backport something coming from Fedora onto the CentOS build system. So I think that's covered the uh, that's covered the, the Giplet side now. Cool. Is there anything that we need to go over in terms of the uh, CI CD? Might not be obvious to people. Yeah, we we build the images on a we build the images, we build the RPM repository and the images upon every merge request. There is the intent to have tests done to some of these images. Uh, we are not that we are not there yet, uh, but down the line, uh, we'll want to you know build the RPM repository, build the images with the uh, RPM, RPM repository, and then test, do some uh, basic tests on these images to make sure that uh, not only they compile, but they actually run. Very cool. Well, I, I think that we've covered just about everything that we can at the moment about uh, the automotive SIG and AutoSD. So we're totally open to questions. I don't see anything popping up yet in Q&A or in the chat. But if you've got any questions, please let us know. And if you think of anything after this call, uh, feel free to, to contact us. Uh, as we said earlier, which I should probably go back to. Um, here we go. You can find us on the mailing list, the CentOS mailing list. Uh, you can also find us in chat on Matrix. And uh, definitely come to the meetings. The meetings have been always really interesting, uh, particularly, I think, the, uh, the office hours. We usually talk about some pretty esoteric stuff. And then there's almost always a discussion about hardware that, uh, that sometimes is fun, sometimes goes a little sideways. But you know that's the way it goes, particularly with hardware. So um, again, I don't see any, any questions in the chat or anything else. So I think we're probably about done.